Hey guys, Matt here. I am excited as today we are continuing our study through the book of Hebrews by looking at Hebrews chapter 4 verses 11 through 16. If you have not been keeping up with this study, I highly encourage you to check out the playlist and catch yourself up because uh, a lot of what we're going to be learning today is building upon what we've already learned up to this point. So I really think it will help you in your understanding if you check that out. First, I'll try to put a link to the playlist down in the description. So we're going to start by reading our passage passage and then we'll go back up to the top and we'll unpack it. So let's start with verse 11. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. All right, guys, we're going to break this down and we're going to do so with a focus on a theme of conviction versus condemnation. So let's start in verse 11. It says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. So of course we see a therefore, once again, this is connecting back when it says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. It's speaking about the Sabbath rest of God that we just learned about in the first 10 verses of chapter four. It is saying that we as believers rest from our works in terms of thinking that we are going to be saved because of our good works. We rest from that. We understand that we are saved solely by grace through faith and by trusting in the finished work of Christ and what he did on our behalf. And so it says, therefore, let's strive to enter that rest. And this is really keeping with the theme of chapter four as well of perseverance. We need to continue to enter that rest. We need to continue to trust in the finished work of Christ. And it says, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. If you look back through chapter four and even through chapter three, we see that disobedience and unbelief are linked so closely together. So when it says we don't want to fall by the same sort of disobedience, you can think of it, we don't want to fall into unbelief. And if we're falling into unbelief, then we will have disobedience. So we are constantly coming back to that Sabbath rest that God has provided for us. We are trusting in his finished work. We are not trusting in our own righteousness. And it actually takes us making an effort, striving to remind ourselves of that, that it is by his works, according to what he has done, not according to our own good works. Then we get to verses 12 and 13. It says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So now we're seeing the power of the word of God, that it really divides things in our life and it exposes us and confronts us with our sin. So as we're reading through scripture, we're going to see all of these different passages telling us what God requires, all of his laws and commandments. And when we read those and we have a healthy assessment of our own life, we're going to see that we fall short. We're going to see areas where we still sin. So for instance, when I'm reading a Ephesians chapter 5, and it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. I can go, Oh, well, I love my wife, but certainly not as Christ loved the church. So I might start thinking of all these ways that I am falling short, and scripture is actually helping me in that process. It's convicting me of my sin. Now, you may think, Well, how does this draw back to verse 11 and what we've been talking about entering God's Sabbath rest? And it's not about works, it's not about your obedience to the law, it's about grace through faith. Well, friends, this is where I think it's important to remember what the purpose of the law is in the first place. What is the purpose or one of the purposes of God giving his commandments and his laws to us? Well, we see this in Galatians chapter three. We're going to start in verse 19. 
It says, why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. So one of the main reasons that the law was given was to point out to us our own inability to keep the law so that we might then look outside of ourselves and look to Christ for salvation. And so that's why when we get back to Hebrews, we see it saying, hey, strive to enter that rest where you're not trusting in your own good works, but you're persevering and trusting in the finished work of Christ. And now it's talking about the word of God, exposing all this sin in your life. Well, as God is working to to demonstrate that sin in your life, it should constantly be driving you back to Christ and saying, yes, Lord, I am not perfect. I, I am not good enough to merit heaven and to merit eternal life on my own. So God in his kindness is helping us to see the sin in our life so that we might persevere in trusting in Christ and entering in to that Sabbath rest. Now let's continue with the uh, last half of our passage for today. So this is verses 14 through 16. It says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Now, this is what I was saying earlier about we're going to talk about conviction versus condemnation. When we read God's word, God's laws, there, there should be a healthy amount of conviction that is there. And as it is dividing the things in our life, it is exposing that sin. We are going to feel conviction. But notice right after this passage in Hebrews has talked about, hey, scripture is going to expose these things in your life. It says, but we have a great high priest, Jesus, who is our intermediary, intermediator, excuse me, I don't even know if that's the correct term, but he intercedes for us. He is our great high priest and uh, he mediates between God and man. And so we can look to him. We don't have to, uh, as we feel that conviction, we don't have to be condemned. We can know that we're trusting in what he has done. And I think this is where really where people can fall into error. See, some people, I've actually heard people teach that, you know, as a Christian, you shouldn't feel conviction over your sin because if you feel convicted, you're not really trusting in the fact that God has forgiven you. No, friends, it is good to feel uh, godly sorrow over your sin. It is good to feel conviction. Yet at the same time, we don't want to go to the opposite extreme and feel condemnation where I start to think, oh my goodness, I've somehow lost my salvation because I haven't obeyed perfectly this week. Well, you never obeyed perfectly. You were never going to be able to merit salvation. And so we can keep looking to Christ. And this is what is so great. It says that this high priest, Jesus, he's not unable to sympathize with us in our weakness. He knows what it's like to be tempted. He knows what it's like to go through trial, to feel that desire to want to do things he shouldn't do, to sin. It says, yet he did not do that. He was completely without sin. And so therefore we can look to him and we can boldly come before him, not feeling that condemnation, but uh, trusting that he is going to help us in our time of need. So when I sin, I can come to Christ and, uh, confess that sin to him and expect forgiveness. But even when I am going through life and I feel a temptation to sin, I don't somehow need to shy away from him. But no, I can come boldly before him and say, Lord, I know that you um, have the power to help me in my time of need. I know that you will give me the grace that I need to walk in obedience, to continue trusting in you and walking by faith and walking in obedience 
in this moment. So this is a really beautiful passage of scripture. It's always pointing back to Christ, guys. It's back to Christ, back to Christ. And I think sometimes people think that the way that we're going to grow in sanctification and in character is just by learning all these different principles and I, I need to just do better at keeping the law. And of course, as true believers, we do want to keep the law. We want to be obedient. But what is the thing that is going to empower us to do that? Looking to Christ. Look to Christ. Trust in Christ. Remember who he is. Remember what he has done and come to him when we need help in our weakness. And he certainly is faithful to help us in those moments. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Just a quick uh, note. I am at least going to take one week off from the Hebrew studies. It may be um, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe even longer than that. I just have a couple of other topics that I want to teach on, and it will give me more time to prepare for some of the chapters that are coming ahead. So I'll continue to put out the teaching videos on Friday, so be on the lookout for them. But just so you know, I'm not you know, scrapping the Hebrew study, we will pick it back up in could be a week, could be three weeks, could be four weeks, but sometime soon. So be sure to subscribe if you have not done so already so that you can stay up to date with all the teaching that is taking place here on the channel. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, God bless.